able to do that. We don't believe that this bill will achieve that, so we cannot support this bill to the House. Yeah. I call Tamati <coughs> Madam Speaker, um, it's, it's, it's been a fascinating afternoon, I've got to say. Uh, I, I stand here to give a, a contribution to this particular bill, uh, not just as a member of parliament, but actually uh, the only other Māori electorate MP uh, that has stood and contributed to this debate today. So I look at this with a unique perspective, uh, Madam Speaker, that while it's so easy for others to stand around the outside and share their thoughts on what they think it's like to be a Māori electorate representative, you have absolute they, Madam Speaker, have absolutely no idea about the pressures um, that, that, that fall onto Māori electorate MPs. And I want to start my contribution uh, by giving absolute props uh, to my colleague over here, Reno Tirikatini, because uh, that's what we do. Being a, a Māori voice in this uh, very esteemed parliament, uh, we actually uh, are charged with the job every day, every hui, every select committee meeting to actually raise the flag up and fight for the rights of Māori. It is people like Reno, people like myself, people like my colleagues um, that have that responsibility to constantly be putting our hand up and saying, where do Māori fit into this? Uh, what about tikanga Māori? What about real Māori? Uh, how do we make sure that we address that balance that was done uh, so wrongly back in 1840 when the agreement was signed, te tiriti was signed? Uh, ever, ever since then, we've been just trying to right the wrongs. That's what we've been trying to do. And even today, as we, uh, as we debate our treaty settlement bills here in Parliament, all we're still trying to do is right those wrongs. Uh, and we continue to do it with this particular um, piece of legislation, uh, Madam, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker, sorry. Uh, this is an attempt for us to address the balance. Uh, this is an attempt for us to actually uh, make sure that we don't constantly have the knife swinging over our heads as Māori uh, saying, uh, this bill, uh, we, we, we might take away Māori seats, we might not, we might, we might not. Uh, that's the constant corridor that has come up time and time again. Uh, every election, it gets bandied around by the other side, sometimes by, uh, by people a little bit closer to us. But uh, this is the constant pressure that we have to deal with, should we have the Māori seats. And the, the most galling part of it is that it's often being talked about by people that aren't even Māori. Nothing about us without us. And actually, whilst, whilst the Māori seat started off on a, um, a very different pathway, actually, over time, Madam Speaker, Māori have fallen in love with our seats. Uh, we had the Māori electoral option just recently where uh, Māori were given the opportunity around the country to be able to jump off. You know, we got given the opportunity. If you didn't want to be on it, you could take yourself off it really quickly. But actually, Māori chose to stay on the Māori role. Why? Because they feel represented by the people that are in those seats, uh, but also by the, the actual structure itself. Māori have, it's taken us a while, but have got confidence in this system. Uh, so the Māori seats are integral to the way that Māori see themselves represented here in Parliament. And do we have to, how many more elections do we have to go through where we uh, have the knife waving over us again, saying, oh, we're going to take them away, we're going to not take them away? Who knows? But actually, I commend absolutely my colleague, uh, Reno Tirikatini, over here, who has, I mean, despite the fact that it might not be a plain sail through, he's actually brought this up because that's what we do as Māori electorate MPs. We stand here. Uh, we say, we don't know how this is going to go, but actually it's kaupapa Māori. It's what our people want us to do. It's what they would expect us to do. It's why they show up every three years and vote for us, so that we can actually push kaupapa Māori in this House. Um, uh, over, over the House, one of my... Uh, opposition colleagues, uh, Nick Smith, talked about how the Māori seats, uh, how the general seats weren't entrenched. Uh, I had a word uh, from my very learned colleague over here, uh, Kiritapu Allen, who told me that actually uh, under section 268, in fact the general seats, the mechanisms are there so that the seats are actually entrenched. But that doesn't actually apply to Māori seats. And so, Madam Speaker, what we're looking for, what we've always been looking for as Māori, is equity. What we're looking for is, is our share. What we're looking for is our part in the debating chamber, our seat at the table, making sure that our voice is being heard, making sure that the New Zealand that we're building is always going to be cognizant of Māori from a Māori point of view, not necessarily from our member for Rodney's voice uh, uh, from, from up in the north or, or from wherever um, other people, well-intentioned, uh, might want to have their opinion. 
actually it's Māori voices that count the most in this, and that's why uh, we've been mandated to show up here to commend this bill to the House and to, to hopefully see it through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I call Nukuraku. It is indeed uh, an honour for me.